everybody and their mother is thinking about or talking about inflation, 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 because there's inflation. Uh, the chairman of the Fed has now taken the word transitory out of the dictionary. I didn't know that Fed chairs were able to, to remove words from dictionaries. So the world is now, other than Japan, of course, is completely um, engulfed in uh, this this inflationary world. So let's not talk about that because the world is already doing that. And instead, let's do something very crazy. I want to try to figure out potential risks of where deflation would come from or disinflation. Because at some point it's going to come. And so just a matter of when and from where. But one of the things I'm thinking of is like this excess inventory buildup. Just in time modeling turns into just in case. Right, for capex consumers, all that kind of thing, right? So, just in time was basically like we'll order stuff as we need it, be it um, on the wholesale side, on the capex side, or on the retail side. And now it's going to be like we don't want to be out, we don't want to um, be in a situation like this ever again where we don't have merchandise on shelves or we don't have enough chips or you know, like um, both the crunchy kind and the computing mm-hmm. kind. So just in time turns to just in case, just in case is deflationary, right? That's yeah. that already seems to be the case. So I guess if do you have any comments on anything like that from what you're seeing from your unique vantage point of this just in time to just in case shift? First of all, is that underway? I feel like it to me, um, just with the amount of warehouses they're building, because they're not factories, they're not any, they're just take the stuff off the boats or bring it from a factory and like just warehouses. And then in the Northeast, I mean, I see a lot of them, I travel a lot of interstate and they're building warehouses everywhere. So once they get completed for, for, for what, like, or, you know, everything, everything. you, you, you name it there. Yeah. I mean, from like hand soap to shovels to pillows, it doesn't just, okay. Gotcha. Just warehousing of all the things. And it, it seems to, like the more I look at it, the more I think about it, and like the more, you know, I'm just really focusing on how like all the pieces fit together and move. Like at some point, we're going to run into being over warehouse. But the other thing is, is, you know, I remember three years ago, I would go to these warehouses that were, and I'm, they still exist. I haven't been there recently, but like they're, they're in highly densely populated areas. It's really hard to get a tractor or trailer into because they were designed for day cabs and 48 foot trailers. And I have a sleeper with a 53 foot trailer. And it's those warehouses, if they move or we get over warehouse, they're going to keep the new ones and those ones could go under, which I mean, these are in residential areas. So then you could have land to build more houses. And I mean, you could see weird deflationary pressures across the board from being over warehoused in 24 months. So, uh, but, but are we current, are you saying, are we currently over warehouses? Is there access? No, no, there's still the building process is going on. And if you wanted me to put a prediction on that, I would say like, well, well, we, 18 months to like 24 months, we would start to see like once they get completed on the inside and then well, you got to hire workers. So and nobody doesn't seem like anybody wants to work at a warehouse. So that or automation. I would think that, well, the, what they're building is going to they're building for automation. Probably. If you're if you're building a warehouse now, you're not really building it for you're building it for as least human labor necessary as possible, I would think. And I can't stress just the the amount of new building I'm seeing going on in the warehouse sector. Like, I mean, they're just putting industrial parks and in, like just buying like farmers' fields, huge swaths of land, and just leveling it off in like five, six, eight warehouses. When and so when did you big, like, when did you start seeing that happen? That building going into the fall was when I really noticed it. And I mean, it's just been consistent since. And they're still in the building phase right now, or are they about to open up and be ready to be to start start storing things? Or uh, some of the the beginning ones that I've seen are starting to open up, and then like, but they're in like every phase. Like I know of places where they're just breaking ground, and I know of places that are just opened up. So they're they're in that they're in the boom period of warehousing. 
if there is about a whole bunch of warehousing capacity about to come online, uh, it sounds to me like the likes of which we haven't seen in the modern era. And that sounds to me like there there's going to be um, at least some sort of release valve of this kind of cl- this this supply chain clogging and and all that and potentially of these at least uh, some some force of these this like inflationary pressure is going to be sort of alleviated with with the advent of this what kind of time frame do you think in terms of what you're seeing the, with these warehouses popping up and where they are in the kind of the building cycle like they're starting to like move stuff in and then i mean the, do they those get filled pretty quickly at this moment and and all that. Yeah, I mean, they're they're definitely starting to open up some of the ones that uh, some of the the beginning ones that I've seen out in like the, the Pennsylvania New Jersey border, and then in like on the eighty one through Pennsylvania on that eighty route uh, Interstate eighty one corridor, which is a very popular um, corridor for shipping. Like they started building there not long long ago, and there's a lot coming online. So. The problem there, like I said, is just going to be like getting the people to work. And um, but as far as the truck aspect of it goes, I kind of like it for like kind of a deflationary pressure because I know like the length of haul has gone up. What is because that? of I mean? um, like like say that my average day, like I would pick up at whatever vendor and take it to this distribution facility. So that vendor would be 200 miles away. Well, since they lost so many employees or they can't find people to work, like now I have to go to another vendor that has the same thing that's another 200 miles away. So instead of driving 200 miles in that length of haul, now I'm driving 400 miles. So as these warehouses come on, that'll bring down, hopefully bring down the length of haul and would also bring down, you know, like fuel usages and, and, and that sort of stuff. Let's say like new warehouse like springs up. Those first, like that first batch of them will get filled immediately, I would assume. And, but then at some point, they're going to stop getting filled up immediately because that like immediate need is being taken care of. And then as, as with everything, they overbuild, they oversupply. And that's going to come later. So in those kind of three stages, I'm guessing we're still in that very initial things. Are like warehouse pops up and then the next day it's full of Ritz crackers and jelly beans and sneakers. So and as they open up, I mean, the problems, I guess, there would just be getting, you know, from the ports, getting the ships unloaded to get them to those warehouses to fill them up because then you would have you know, spare capacity coming online that you can put those goods in and then get empty containers back to ship the empty containers over and then the cycle starts in new. What would tell you what would be continued increase in inflation or a leveling off or a potential pullback in cost of goods? The things I'm going to keep my eye on are just seeing like, because it's always peak season in something. Here's Valentine's Day, and then you roll right into spring. So people are going to be doing yard work and mold. So once I see how that starts to roll off and and how, what the reactions are there and how hard it is to get, I mean, to me right now, it's it's not it's not even a trucking like a driver shortage problem. It's like those that last few feet to the the shelf problem because I've been like I deliver a little bit of everywhere, and I've been to places where they'll have the stock in a trailer in the dock or like in the where like in the back of the store they don't have the people to put it on the shelf i mean that's not a trucking problem now that's a that's the okay. last 20 feet to the shelf it's not last mile it's last yeah. it's it's last yard <laughs> yeah like we're we're fourth and goal yeah so it's just I don't know how like like if people aren't getting that first job that is you know your retail job to get you through like a little bit of high school money or college money like if they're not doing that anymore like I don't that I don't have the answer to. You're, what you're saying is the clog really isn't at it's not at the 
ports out of Asia. It's not um, crossing the Pacific or you know the the, the body of water. It's not at the uh, you know the, um, the the anchorage point or the port of LA or Long Beach or uh, uh, unloading or the transport uh, system from truck drivers or the warehouses or anything like that. It's actually everything has been delivered to that local Target, Walmart, whatever store, but then it doesn't actually get onto the shelves itself. So it's physically at the store in like what some back back room or something like, the- yeah, like a big. But I mean, even then, like, and it doesn't matter where it's at. Like, even if it's just you're picking up at a a vendor to take to a warehouse, like it's just that last, like. So you, when you drive somewhere and you drop something off, let's say it's at a store or something, or it's, if it's at a store, if it's at a warehouse, whatever, you just leave your your cargo. Whatever's in your trailer, you just leave there, and that's as long as somebody signs off for it. And that was their problem, and they have to now do what they will with it, right? Whether that's that right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, so, I'm, I, don't, I don't stock shelves and do all that exactly, stuff. I... Exactly. So when you do drop things off, this is on retailers then that are basically have accepted delivery that have goods but aren't able to sell them. Because they're not out on the shelves to be for sale, to be taken off of their hands for a transaction. Yeah, I mean that's 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 what it's sounding like to me. Like when I'm talking to these people, and I get to you know everywhere I'm that I get to go, and it so, sounds like they're they're definitely having problems just getting that last little bit. Okay, that's but that's that's a very that's a very insightful, interesting sort of sort of point nobody ever talks about that because i I, and i could see why that would go that would be kind of overlooked because on paper from like kind of macro data wise it would seem like deliveries were made to the stores and we got like you know thing we got we, we got inventory from ports in china out to the uh kmart in little rock arkansas or whatever and this and that. So that so therefore, if sales aren't being made, it must be a weak consumer. Would be the assumption. What if it's actually not the the consumer is actually has the you know the desire to and means to buy, just that they're not on the shelves, even though they're they're at the stores. It's just not available for them to purchase. So you're getting inflation because there's less stuff on the shelves, even though the stuff exists in the. 20 feet away in the, some back room and that that's a that's not sort of situation or dynamic dynamic that i've heard discussed ever and the that's, one thing i haven't awesome. heard like this year was you always hear about like you know this company or that company or whoever is going to hire all these seasonal workers to get through the holidays and like i heard no seasonal hiring this year there was no talk of that because they were just too busy trying to still hire yeah, the, a regular employee. Yeah. Seasonal means regular is already fine. Right. <laughs> like, like any employee that comes in, it doesn't matter what season it is, that's a regular employee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's interesting. So, uh, and again, this is, I guess we'll have to find um, a, a, a retail stock person, but. Um, like shelf shelf stock person, not green and red t- blinking ticker stock person. Um, but um, but that's that's a very interesting angle um, at where the clog is or a clog is because that's being overlooked. Yeah, because like that's again, the one that I'm seeing right now that nobody's talking about is, and I mean it doesn't matter. Like I said, where you go, if it's you know brick and mortar retailer, or if you go down to the the nursery to buy poinsettias or like it's it's kind of like a little bit of everywhere. Like restaurants are like short staffed. It's crazy. That's but I think that you're missing it because or not you. You're the only one not missing it, and I think that we are are missing it because this is why we do the show because <laughs> of the the macro data, the broad based over overly broad based sort of you know like um like not not taking real world considerations into consideration would suggest that like okay things have been delivered to, sh- to stores 
sales are not being made, it must be the consumer. And yeah. it's just not the case. It's not the case. Definitely seems to me like something going on. Because like I keep hearing, you know, all this stuff on the you know the news about like, oh, I went to Whole Foods and like it's seventy five percent full and like the back room's looking pretty good. <laughs> Let's keep an eye on that. Uh, I I guess like um you know try to talk to the the you know this like very exclusive club of truck drivers <laughs> of truck driving employees and figure it out it reminds me of like so i used to work in, in i used to get paid seven dollars an hour i worked at like a, a retail clothing store back when i was younger and it was like a skate shop like a skate clothing store and in the back they had you know skate shoes like vans and whatever and uh it was very always very so like and pe- customers would come and say like yeah can i have say this in like a size nine or whatever and it was very annoying for me to to do that so every time it's like some somebody would ask me to go find them a pair of shoes in a certain size i would just go to the back and then i would sit there and i would not look at all like through <laughs> like the, and i would just and i would like just kind of hang out and like i would spend maybe like five ten minutes like a pretty good amount of time and i'd come back and be like sorry we don't we don't have any anything and then you're like you don't have a size like size seven seven and a half eight eight and a half nine i was like nope 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 check all those nope check all that nope 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 so basically what's happening is that <laughs> but um not done by some like lazy you know kid <laughs> but just just the lack of ability to do that like the the items are there the customer is willing to buy it's just not getting done because there is um let's just call it a an unhelpful uh staff or lack of helpful staff yeah i mean maybe your new new retail business model isn't self-checkout it's self-unload and self-checkout you know (laughs) um all right well that's fantastic insight i would love to see that come out of some institutional bank research report but it won't Uh yeah this is it's really interesting People need to think about that from that angle. So if anyone has any insight on that or thoughts on that, please let us know on the exchange, on the Real Vision Exchange. I'm more than happy to to discuss. But that's a really, really, yeah, that's original. <laughs> that's awesome. Good stuff.